Hi, and welcome to this three-part series as we design, build, and launch our new rocket called Light Shadow. Now, we've been launching water rockets for about 10 years now, uh, and we've also launched some medium power. So we finally decided to taste the dark side and try uh, going for our L1 certification flight. Now, while you can't uh, fly your L1s with a water rocket, we decided to build one where you can fly both solid propellants as well as water and air. Now this rocket is uh, optimized uh, for getting the L1 certification rather than for a particular altitude. And because we wanted to fly H&I motors, we decided to use a 38 millimeter mount. And so the design is built based around that. Now um, enough chit chat, let's get started. Have a look at the pressure chamber, how it's built and also the business end of the rocket. So we start off with an 80 millimeter PVC tube. And then we use this mold release wax uh, to polish it. Uh, that will then help separate the fiberglass tube from it. So first the wax goes on and then we just polish it off until you get a really smooth shiny finish. Then we use glad bake, don't accept any substitutes. And we roll that onto the tube in one continuous strip and finally secure it with some tape. And we're using the West Systems Epoxy. Uh, we're using the 206 Slow Hardener. Now first we roll it onto the tube before the glass goes on. And here we're using 200 GSM uh, e-cloth. And then we just pour and roll, pour and roll. And finally over the top, we give it a couple of wraps of 85 GSM cloth and that just gives the surface a nice finish. There's much less sanding to do that way. But again, just more epoxy and rolling. Now, after it's cured, we take it off the mandrel And it does come out fairly easily. Then we just pull the baking paper out and that also comes out fairly easily. Then trim the ends and we also give it a sand, give it a nice square finish. And that weighs about 670 grams by itself and the wall thickness is 1.1 millimeters. Then we cut up some wood blocks and these will be used as plugs. First we're doing the forward closure plug. Now we paint these with two pack paint so it's got a nice smooth uh, hard finish and we cover it with a nice coat of silicon grease then we get an ordinary party balloon and we slip that over the top and then we give it another nice coat of silicon grease and we put another balloon over the top of that Then we give it a light coat to prevent the epoxy from sticking. Now here we secure it to an old drill that helps us hold it and we can turn it as we go. Now we're using uh, 15 gauze of this, uh, again 200 GSM cloth and it's bias cut which makes it a bit easier to uh, curve around the edges. And we just go around adding more and over the tip of it we add a few layers of cloth in that shape and finally there's a, a nice wrap that goes around the base that makes it easier to slide into the main body tube 
and after it's taken off and sanded this is what it looks like. Then we sand the tube and the forward closure and here we're using 24 hour uh, epoxy the nice strong stuff. Again we're applying a fairly thin coat to both sides uh, both the inside and the outside. Now as we slide it together we try and get a bead going along the, that edge so no air pockets get developed as we push it in. So just work it in slowly. Make sure there's a constant bead of glue all the way around that leading edge. And finally we put it on the rotisserie. Now this helps prevent drips uh, on the inside of the joint. While we can we have access to the outside, we don't have access to the inside. So this lets it turn and we do that for maybe two or three hours and we're using some heat lamps here because it was fairly cold in the workshop. And finally when it's cured, uh, that's what it looks like. Next we machine up the tailcone plug. And that's just crafted by hand uh, and here we're giving you the final sand. And we're using this two part, um, two pack paint that uh, gives it a nice hard finish and also nice and smooth. We use this on all of the plugs that we make. and it does end up getting two coats. So same process again, uh, this time we're using 14 gauze for this one. Um, just keep wrapping. And finally the next day, this is how we get it off the mold. So we just pull on the balloon, which separates from the mold itself, uh, from the plug and the actual tail cone. And then using a pair of gloves because it's got still sharp edges uh, to pull it off the plug itself. It's trying to be gentle. And there it is. Now it needs some sanding and trimming. Now here we're just making up uh, the motor mount tube. It's on a 40 millimeter PVC tube. Uh, um, and again, same process again as the main body tube. Paper comes out and it's ready to be trimmed. Just using a piece of paper to get a nice square edge. And it also gets a sand and then it's cut to the right length. So here we've machined up some centering rings for this pipe. And then we insert the pipe with the centering rings. We put the PVC pipe over the top of that. And some more baking paper to prevent it from sticking and the motor mount tube over the top of that. And then just apply some epoxy and strips of fiberglass to over the joint. So we did some small ones all the way around and we used longer ones to hold it in shape. And then finally we used again the 85 GSM cloth to give a better finish at the end. And here it is. And the next day it's all cured.
So we can just pull out the central core, pull out the tube and the paper itself. And there it is, ready to be glued to the back of the rocket. Now before we do that, we have to machine up some more centering rings. And these are used to create a nozzle alignment jig, which you'll see in a minute. And the discs just pop out. And we made two of these. So they go over the 40 mil PVC pipe and that just slides into another 80 millimeter tube. Then we add some angle brackets and we hold those down with rubber bands. And that's ready to be used after we glue in the tail cone. So again, just sand around the edges inside and out. And some more 24 hour epoxy. And again, we work the tail cone in slowly so that we get a bead all the way around as we push it in. And you can see how it moves quite a bit so it could potentially be glued in at an angle. And that's the last thing we want is the thrust vector being off center line of the rocket. So after it gets pushed in, we clean off the excess glue and then add the nozzle alignment jig. So the PVC pipe goes through the motor mount tube and then we put on a couple more extra rubber bands and that whole thing's kept aligned and we stand it up vertically so there's no danger of weight on one side pulling it towards one side or another. The next day we can just pull it all apart and now the motor mount tube and tail kind of glued to the rest of the body. And at this stage it weighs about 810 grams. Now we just cut off this large block of aluminium. And next we need to make the... And next we need to make the motor retainer thread. So here we're just cutting some thread. And then we have to drill out the big hole in the middle. And now it's ready to be glued onto the back of the rocket. Again, we're using the same 24 hour epoxy. Now we protected the thread with just a piece of tape so we wouldn't get epoxy in it. Here we're just wrapping um, some strands of fiberglass around the base of that ring just to make sure it doesn't get pulled off when the whole rocket's under pressure. And now we make the retainer nut uh, out of another lump of aluminium. And here we're cutting the thread on the inside. Yeah. 
And here's the finished retainer nut. Now we need to make the nozzle adapter uh, for when it's a water rocket. So that's just machined out of a piece of plastic. And we're just using the nozzle from Dark Shadow. Uh, since we've already got the launcher, we might as well use that. And that just screws in to the nozzle adapter. So here is the assembly procedure for when we want to fly it both as pyro and water rocket. So here's the CTI motor case and this is just an, uh, a used reload. Just screws in as normal. Then next we add this thrust ring that we also machined up. And then we're using this cardboard liner uh, to prevent the hot motor case from touching the inside of the fiberglass tube. Just so that it doesn't go too soft. And the channel in the cardboard actually allows hot air that's inside the rocket uh, because it's completely sealed to escape out. So we don't get overpressurized uh, chamber if we're flying just a regular motor. And then when we want to fly it as a water rocket, take the motor out, screw the nozzle into the nozzle adapter. Now here we don't have any O-rings on the nozzle adapter, but those will be in place when we actually fly it. And then the retainer nut goes over the top. And it's ready to be used as a water rocket. Then finally we mix some epoxy and micro balloons to give us a nice thick paste and that's then used to fill in any of the rough edges uh, around the tail cone and the transition between the tail cone and the main body cube. Now for the forward end of the pressure chamber, we glue this PVC ring on the front and again we use the alignment jig to make sure that when the payload section's mounted, it's all aligned. So next we make up the shock cord mounting point and this will attach to the front of the rocket. We're using a bit of carbon sleeve because that was nice and easy to use and it's also nice and stiff when it's finished. So lots of epoxy and the wires just helps keep it all in shape. And some more fiberglass cloth over the top just to keep it all nice and flat. And when it's cured the next day, we just pull the wire off. And then remove it from the mold the same way. Just pull the balloon back, which separates it. Then we trim the excess off, both top and bottom. And finally we insert a steel pin that will be used to actually hold the shock cord. And that just gets glued to the front of the rocket. And here the pressure chamber's finished, ready for testing. So if you're still awake after that, uh, thanks for watching. 
And in the next part, we're going to cover the nose cone, the deployment mechanism and the fins and finishing off the rocket. Um, so don't forget to subscribe. We'll see you next time.